what's on our heart. Amen. I promise you this is the this is what we need help with in our day. I don't know of any drunkards in here. They might be. Amen. But I don't know about it. Amen. I don't know of any harlots in here, but they might be. Amen. You never know what's inside a church. Amen. But I don't have a problem with drinking and things like that, but I do have some problems with other things. Amen. Verse number 18. The Bible said, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Now, this is the Lord Jesus speaking here. And he's talking to his disciples and he said, you know what? The world ain't going to be all excited as you think they're going to be about you following Jesus. Now, they don't mind you being religious. And they don't mind you meeting at the synagogue. Amen. They just don't want you getting too crazy about Jesus. Amen. I mean, as long as you're willing to leave Jesus out of everything, they'll be your best friend. That's why if you're a child of God, you'd be ashamed of yourself tonight if you, if you go around saying Merry Xmas. Amen. And such garbage as that. Amen. You know what that is? People think that's all cute and pretty, but all it is is another way to get Jesus out of everything. Amen. Amen. Uh, this world don't like Jesus, amen. They don't like you either if you love Jesus, amen. amen. He said, if ye were of the world, the world would love his own. Boy, they, you, there's a few been identified by this. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my sayings, they will keep yours also. In other words, Jesus is making it very plain to them. Their problem's not with you. Their problem's with God. Amen. He said, but all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had... They had not had sin. There's that issue of sin again. He said, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the, word, that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law, they hated me without a cause. They don't have to have a cause to hate you. Amen. They'll find a reason. Amen. The Bible said, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from my Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Father in heaven, we love you tonight. We thank you, God, for your word. Thank you, God, for your goodness, Lord, to us this night. Lord, how blessed we are just to be a child of the living God. Lord, I pray tonight you would help us, Lord, as we try to preach. Lord, I pray that you'd make preaching easy, God. You'd speak to our hearts. And Lord, help us from your word, God, I pray. Certainly, Lord, tonight I needed the help with these passages of Scripture. Lord, I pray that you'd help me, Lord God, learn how to love those that hate us, Lord God. And I pray that you'll do that work in our hearts tonight that only you can in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Uh, we'll try to preach tonight on how to love those that hate us. Amen. How to love those that hate us. I wonder tonight, how do we fare with this? Amen. Now, I wonder how do we measure up when it comes to this thing of loving our enemies. Amen. And loving those that hate us. And loving those that despitefully use us, amen. Now, I don't have no problem, amen, loving my brethren, amen, and loving those, amen, that love me, amen. And I don't have a problem being good to those that are good to me, amen. Uh, but my friend, my problem is probably the same as yours, amen. Uh, we have a difficult time loving those that don't love us, amen, and those that hate us and those that uh, despitefully use us. Turn to the book of Matthew chapter 5. And we'll read some scriptures here, amen, and we'll try to make it uh, very plain tonight. He said this in verse 10, blessed are they, amen, or oh, how happy, amen. How can you be happy in the midst of persecution, amen? 
He said, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Uh, The Lord Jesus said, Rejoice, and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Amen. Uh, The question arises this, Brother Brad, is why are the righteous persecuted? Amen. Uh, Why are the righteous persecuted? Hey, how about this way? Amen. Amen. Have you as an individual ever been persecuted? Amen. Has there ever been a time in your life uh, when you suffered for the cause of Christ? Amen. I'm not talking about suffering for being a liar. I'm not talking about suffering for being a whoremonger. I'm not talking about suffering for committing murder. Uh, Brother Ty, I'm talking about suffering persecution uh, for righteousness sake. Amen. For the cause of Christ. Can I tell you, uh, back when I got saved, Brother Leopard, I thought, man, uh, my family's just just going to love me to death, amen. Uh, They're going to be tickled, amen, uh, that I got born again, amen. Uh, man, they, they was glad when I told them I got saved, uh, uh, but they wasn't too happy, amen, uh, when I fell in love with Jesus, amen, and started telling them that they too uh, needed to be saved, amen. I mean, they wouldn't have drunkard like I was, at least uh, uh, most of them wouldn't, amen, somewhere. Uh, but when I started telling them, you know what, uh, you may be morally good, amen. Amen. And you may think you all right, but you know what? Uh, you need to be saved the same way I got saved. Amen. Uh, friend, they didn't like that too much. Amen. In other words, they was glad I got saved. Uh, uh, they was glad I quit drinking. They was glad I quit doping. Amen. Uh, but they weren't too crazy about me telling them you need to be saved. Uh, and God's got a church for you. Uh, and hey, if you are saved, uh, uh, you know what? God wants you to be in church. Amen. Oh, you know what? They were some that said, I'm saved. Uh, But they had no identification marks of a child of God. Amen. And boy, so therefore, we started having some falling outs. Amen. Uh, With the family. Amen. Uh, Yes, I'm saved. Amen. Uh, You know what? Family reunion time would come. Uh, You know what? All of a sudden, Saturdays wasn't good enough uh, for family reunion, so we're going to move it to Sunday. And my question is, why is all these religious Say people uh, go have family reunion on Sunday instead of on Saturday, amen, uh, where they can be out of the house of God. Uh, well, the reason is, amen, they didn't want to be at the house of God anyways, uh, uh, so they had to find a way uh, that would soothe their little conscience, amen, why they wouldn't. Uh, so they say, hey, we have a family reunion. This is where it's at. It's on Sunday. Uh, guess what? We're not coming, amen. Right. Well, I can't believe you're not coming to family reunion. We ain't had one in three years. <laughs> Well, I could care less if you have one the next 50 years, amen. If it involves laying out the house of God to go to family gatherings, amen. Amen, friend. And you know what I find in the midst of that? uh, They started not liking us too much, amen, uh, because of those things. But I want to tell you, friend, uh, the Lord Jesus said it's going to be that way. Uh, The righteous will suffer persecution. And if you've never suffered any kind of persecution for the cause of Christ, uh, my question to you is why not? Amen. Why not? Amen. You know what he said in this world, ye shall have tribulation. Amen. There's going to, in a child of God's life, uh, everybody's not going to love you. Amen. Uh, because you love Jesus. Amen. And so there's going to be some persecutions. Amen. Uh, there's going to be some folks uh, uh, that slam the door in your face. Uh, there are going to be some folks that will curse you out. Uh, can I tell you something else? Uh, they're going to, they're going to, they're going to be some folks. Uh, that'll push your buttons, amen. I mean, they know where they're at, and they'll push those buttons because they want you to respond in a way, amen, that a child of God ought not respond, amen. And if they can ever get you in the flesh and cause you to respond that way, then they feel like they've gotten some victories over you, amen. Uh, But I got news for you tonight. Uh, Haters are going to hate, amen. And you know what? They ain't going to be as crazy about Jesus as you are. And they glad, amen, you're saved, uh, but you're taking it a little bit too far. Amen. And so here it is, the Lord Jesus is telling them, amen. He's telling them there now, my friend. Uh, he's saying, you know what? The world hated me. And they're going to hate you too. And he said, Brother Ty, he said, now, they'll love their own. So that tells me something here tonight. If the world is just giddy about you, 
and the world is happy about you, amen, being saved, and you never do offend anybody, bless your heart, amen, you know what? It may be because you just don't know the Lord, amen. amen. It may just be because you've got a religious facade, amen, that's not true Christianity. I'm telling you tonight, church, a true biblical Christianity, an action in your life is going to offend some people. They ain't going to like it, amen. You know what? they all good. It's just like those workplaces, amen. Uh, those workplaces, amen, all of a sudden they have these uh, gatherings, amen. And when they get you together, and boy, uh, they want to have a little dinner. And you say, hold up. Let's, ha let's ask the Lord's blessing over this food. And uh, half of them claims to be saved. Uh, half of them's religious. Uh, but they can't believe, amen, uh, that you're going to call them out for not wanting to bless the food, amen. Yeah, amen. I say, praise God, if you're a saved child of God, uh, you ought not ever sit down and eat a plate of food without giving God's blessings, amen. Asking God's blessings and giving Him glory. Uh, but the world don't like these things, amen. And he said, you know what? We're going to have, the question's not, is the world going to hate you? The question is, how do you respond to those that do? How do you learn to love those that do? Uh, how do we respond when we are hated on? Do we respond, amen, out of retaliation and resentfulness? Or do we use it as a motivation, amen, uh, to continue on serving the Lord, amen? Uh, he said in the Word of God, rejoice. And hey, is that right? We ought to rejoice, Brother Ty, amen, when somebody does that, amen. Why? Because it's for Christ's sake. Think about it this way, amen. Throughout the history of the church, you can trace the church back far as you want to, all the way back to Jesus, amen. And even before, uh, God's people has always suffered persecution. Right. Amen. I don't know if any of you have ever read Fox Book of Martyrs. Right. Amen. Can I tell you, friend, uh, Brother Brad, in that book, it's a little bit about the history of Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. And it talks about those that was flayed alive, amen. You know what? For the cause of Christ, amen. I'm telling you, friend, it's a shame, amen, but they was boiled in oil. How they was pulled apart on the torture rack, amen. And you know what? In the Word of God, you remember Cain and Abel? I remember Abel was a righteous man. Uh, Cain was a wicked man. You know what Cain did? He rose up and slew Abel, amen. And then you go on from there, amen. You find a man by the name of David. He was a man out of God's own heart. He was constantly, amen, having to dodge spears in the wilderness, amen. I'm telling you, friend, if you live the part, amen, you're going to be hated. There's going to be some persecuted. Daniel was thrown in the lion's den. You know what? John the Baptist had his head delivered on a platter. Amen. You know why? All for Christ's sake. And he goes on, amen. What do we do, amen, when we're being treated this kind of way? You know what? Miss Davis was talking about her job a couple weeks ago. You know what? It's amazing they can get off of work, amen, to go to family reunions. They can get off of work to go to the racetrack, amen. Say amen right there. Uh, they'll let them all work for four days to go to the racetrack. Uh, they'll let them all for two weeks, amen, uh, to go to vacation. And you know what? Uh, they'll let them off any day they want to as long as it ain't the Lord's day, amen. And as long as it ain't for the cause of Christ, amen. As long as you leave Jesus out of it, we'll let you do it, amen. But I thought about this now. Why does the world hate us, first of all? Give you two things, and then we'll give us three points and be done. Why does the world so hate us? Why does the world hate Christianity? They don't hate our religion. You look at Muslims, you look at Muslims today, that religion, amen, is being pushed. That religion is being promoted, amen. Ain't nobody hating no Muslims, amen. I'm telling you, let's give them their way, amen. I'll let them do this. Let's don't offend any, amen. But you know what I find? It's because, look what he said in John chapter 15 and verse number 19. He said, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you're not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Now, you know why they hate you, Brother Brad? It's because you're different. 
It's because you refuse, amen, uh, to be some kind of pacifist, amen, uh, that just goes along with every little whim that comes up. Uh, you know what you draw, so you know what Christianity does? As a child of God, you know what you are. Uh, you are a dividing line in this world, amen. I'm telling you, you draw the lines, amen. You say there's some things we just ain't going to do, amen. There's some things we just ain't going to accept. We're not going to listen to that. We're not going to talk that way. We're not going to go there. And the world despises that amen and can I tell you what religion does too amen it's cause you're different he said for righteousness sake they persecuted you now not only that it's because of their devotions remember what he said he said for their for his namesake it's what you're devoted to when you devote yourself to Christ and to him alone and he has the preeminence in your life and friends, you ain't going to do anything, amen, to get out of the will of God. And you're not going to compromise truth, amen, uh, to make people happy. I've heard people say, well, uh, we just fudged on it a little bit uh, so that we can keep the peace, amen. There's a lot of devils, amen, in the pulpit today uh, that has fudged on it just a little bit uh, so that they can so-called keep the peace, amen. And they're not keeping the peace, amen. Uh, there's a coming destruction, amen, uh, to that mess. I want to tell you, friend, uh, we don't fudge, Brother Jacob, on anything in the Word of God to keep the peace. Peace, amen. Uh, you ought to let your yea be yea and your nay be yet nay. And you know what you ought to do? Uh, you ought to establish in your heart, let God be true and every man a liar. If God said it, that settles it, amen. Uh, we're not going to deviate from it. And even if it does mean, amen, uh, there's going to be troubles and there's going to be persecution. Can I go on and tell you, friend, uh, there's people that don't like you today. Amen. And there's people that don't like me today. If we would just compromise just a little bit. Amen. We'd be okay. You know what? If you just wouldn't be so tight on those dress standards, we'd love you to death. Amen. We will love you to death. Amen. Amen. I mean, you'll be the best thing since peanut butter. And man, we've already got the bread. And we're going to have a jolly old time in Jesus. And you know what? If you just wouldn't be so mean all the time, that's what your family members will say. If you just wouldn't do this, I mean, you know what they'll do? Ain't no sense of buying my children shorts, amen, because they don't wear them. Amen. amen. And any time the family has bought us some, you know what they do? They go into stinking garbage, amen. And they do not go back to anybody else. And they do not, hey, is that right, amen? And the reason of that is, if it's wrong for them to wear it, amen, my children ain't going to wear it. Right. Amen. You know what? My ch- they say, well, you could have passed them along to somebody else that does. That makes a lot of sense, don't it? Amen. Uh, you know what I'll find? I'm just talking tonight, amen, about these things. You know what? They'll persecute. You know what? They'll sit in the church house. They'll love you to death. I don't, I don't come to the conclusion of this. Uh, these people want pastor, but they don't want a pastor. Amen. I'm telling you that to be so. Uh, they want a pastor, amen, that agrees with them. They want a preacher, amen, uh, that's line upon line, uh, dot upon dot with them. Amen, but as long, but as moment you say something that don't go along with them, all of a sudden, amen, uh, you're a liberal devil, amen. Uh, you know what I find out? You're too liberal for some, and you're too tight for others, amen. I found out, amen, I ain't sticking my finger in there and find out what you like, what you don't. Hey, you know what we'll do? Uh, we'll just agree with God, amen. If we got problems with that, amen, we just have to deal with it, amen. That's right, amen. You know what? Uh, you know what I find? If you ain't careful, you'll get in the pulpit and your hands will be so tied. Amen. Well, I can't say this. It's going to fend him. I can't say this. She's going to get mad. Amen. Uh, you know what? I'll go get a fishing pole and a box of tackle and spend my Sundays on the lake before I did that garbage. Amen. That's exactly right. I'll find myself a tree and shoot deer all day Sunday before I do some garbage like that. Amen. Oh, you know what? You can't say this. You can't say that. For you know it. You can't say anything. Uh, but Jesus loves me so. Uh, for this I know. Amen. You know what amazes me? That same Bible they get that out of says all those other things. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm amazed. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something else. That strong concordance that we use and live by religiously, amen, to back up what we teach and preach out of the Word of God, uh, you know what? It's amazing how we'll take it on some things, uh, uh, but other things, amen. Well, that's just not the inspired Word of God. 
Well, it ain't inspired when you're trying to prove that other stuff either. Amen. That's right. Amen. Well, that ain't the inspired word of God. Well, every time I hear you open your mouth, you're quoting what Strong says. Amen. Only time you don't like Strong's, amen, when it goes against your way of living. Amen. That's exactly right. Amen. Boy, I was studying up a little bit. I'm going to preach on shorts pretty long. Y'all might as well get ready for it. Amen. Amen. I've been studying on that garbage. Amen. And I'm going to just tell you something. And you know what that word thigh means? That he talks about nakedness? According to the Strong's, it means leg. It don't mean, I'm amazed how we cut it off at the knee. Amen. God said it meant um, that Strong's concordance that we use everything else for. It says that word thigh means leg. Amen. When the priest was going up the steps, he told him to put on britches, amen, up underneath his robe, amen, uh, so that it would cover his nakedness, amen. Uh, now, if I'm going up these steps tonight, uh, what part of my legs would you see if I had a robe on? It wouldn't be this part, it'd be this part, amen. And God said, amen, amen, to cover up our nakedness, amen. Oh, man, I'm amazed, amen, in our day how things change over the years, amen. You know what I find? I just find you a word of God. I get settled, amen, in what you believe uh, and anchor your feet down in it and say, come hell or high water, uh, come the Baptist brethren. It don't matter what it is. I'm going to stand right here, amen. Amen, friend. You know what I found out, amen. Amen. You know what I'll tell you what? I ain't over here for a paycheck, I'll tell you that. Amen. amen. That's right, amen. I've been working all my life, and it don't bother me one bit I to look at some devil straight in the eyeballs and call their sin out and tell them it's wicked and ungodly, and you know what? You need to deal with it and get it right, amen. And don't blame me, amen, uh, when you start changing. Amen. It's amazing. I've been preaching for 18 years, almost 19 years, and been preaching the same old message. You know what? The message ain't ever changed. But I tell you what I have found out. Those people of God will change. Oh, yes. I'm telling you, you can pull up tapes, amen. Listen now, I'm just trying to help us. You can pull, go back under that sound system and pull out some tapes if you want to and go listen to them. And some of the same stuff uh, that people used to say amen to, every time I mention it, they get blood red, amen. I'm telling you, friend, how uh, the message ain't changed. It's people that have changed. They change, amen. You know what, Brother, Brother Small, I'm going to tell you something, a good, good something to do. Uh, just get the Bible, the Word of God, and don't, don't ask a bunch of Baptist brethren what they think about it and come to the conclusion, let what the Word of God says be the Word of God uh, because Baptists will tell you, you can go to five different Baptists and get five different answers and they ain't but one Word of God. Amen. Oh, but you know what he said? He said, marvel not. That word hate there means to detest. It means despise. You know what I find? It means to be hated. Without a cause. You think about, brother child, you think about being hated without a cause. Jesus, amen. Can I go and tell you something? Jesus was sinless. And they hated him. Jesus was perfect. He was the walking, living word of God. And they hated him. So every time you speak it, guess what? They're going to hate you too. Amen. Amen. But that's what he's telling them. He said, you know what? They hate those devotions you got. You just like Jesus, amen. You trying to live. Hey, listen, don't you taking it too far. Can I ask you a question? How far is too far? Amen. You know what I've always noticed when it comes to these standard issues in a Baptist church? When you start letting up on them, there ain't no stopping point. I never see a stopping point. When we start easing up, it always gets worse and worse. It all, always more flesh starts getting showed. Amen. That's exactly right. It's never, amen, I'm going to cover a little more up. You know what? I've been studying, and God's been dealing with me, and I'm going to cover more up. I don't ever hear that. Amen. But what I do hear, amen, I've been studying the Word of God. And we're going to show a little bit more flesh now than we used to. <laughs> amen. All of a sudden, amen, you found a need to study. Hey, man, you know what? I'm amazed how people say, I've just always took them for their word. Well, that's on you. Right. 
You've been saved 20 years and just now starting to study. Amen. Can I give you some more study tools? I can give you the word of God, amen. And you know what? I can give you a strong concordance and I can tell you to quit believing every little thing that comes along. I just cause somebody else is doing it don't mean you should. I can I go and tell you something else? Just cause somebody else does it and you ain't saw the judgment of God on them, I don't mean he won't judge you, amen. And there's some folks say, well, it must be okay because they're doing it and God ain't judged them, amen. Well, first of all, they probably lost and probably going to hell, amen. And that's why God ain't judged them for it, amen. But you know what? God's long suffering. And He may not be so long suffering with you as He is with them. And that's why I say, man, I get worried, amen, when I see a little trend. Amen. When somebody else does something, all of a sudden you'll get somebody else to get on board. Amen. And then before you know it, you got five or six families sitting around the church. And they all want to go that direction. And they're mad at you because you won't. Amen. And you know what I say? <laughs> Listen, I'd rather hear a fat baby Bert than I had a bunch of Baptists try to tell me that we need to ease up and back up a little bit on what we believe. Amen. I would just rather do it. Amen. I'm telling you, I ain't got no time for that kind of nonsense of saying I'm going to back up on this and I'm going to, for you know it, you know what happened? I'm trying to help us tonight. You know what happens? Well, for long, amen, you let up on one standard and then they all go on. You know, I, I've always, well, you know what? Well, we feel like, what if you feel like drinking? For long, they won't wine in the communion. Amen. I'm just telling you, you know, what I feel like, well, I won't tell you what, feelings don't stop nowhere. One thing that happened, you know what amazes me? This same crowd that says, preacher, you're just a little bit too far on that. There's somebody else on the other side of the room all of a sudden, they want to wear those sleeveless shirts. Amen. And those sleeveless shirts, amen, you ought to keep some sleeves on. Amen. Let's interject that before we go any further. But they don't see no problem with sleeveless shirts. But the same person that wants me to go along with this garbage over here, I see a big problem with sleeveless shirts. And they want me to come over here and stand in front of them and blow them out, but leave their stuff alone. I'm amazed. Y'all ain't following me tonight, are you? I'm telling you, friend, that is the truth. Amen. I'm telling you, I've pastored a Baptist church for 12 years now, and I know, amen, that these people sitting all over the pew, they want you to anchor down on everybody else's sin, and I'm telling you, that same strong concordance that backs up what you're preaching about their sin, they shouting it out, glory to God, but the moment you park in front of their pew, it's, oh, Lord, you preacher, you done gone crazy. And then you know what they start doing? I'm going to, they start plotting. We got to find a way to get rid of that man. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, I've seen it too many times in a Baptist church. We got to find, hey, we ain't going to have that. He ain't going to back up off of it. He ain't going to let up. He's done got his mind made up. We got to get rid of him. He's going to destroy our church. He's going to empty our pews. Uh, and we'd be better off with 12 uh, that loved God and did right than a house full of devils. Amen. That's right. That's right. A hindering to the work of God. That's exactly right. And you know what? Just so everybody's clear, I never have and never will preach to try to run anybody off. Preach to try to help you. And sometimes, even in preaching, I've been helped. A preacher preached this week several times, buddy. That stuff hit me head on. And you know what I did? I didn't get mad at him. I said, Lord, you know, we need to read a little bit about this and check into it. Amen. Make sure, amen, what we're doing is right. Amen. Well, I want to tell you, it ain't long, amen. Guess what? Guess what? The music standards, they'll be gone. You, listen. You know what? You're foolish and naive if you think you can turn a bunch of young people loose with a bunch of guitars and mandolins and everything else and think everything they play is going to be to the glory of God. They're going to be some beats that you don't like. Amen. And you're like, hey, we need to tone that down just a little bit. We ain't in the nightclub, amen. Amen. Is that what Moses, when he come off the mountain, he heard the sound of the music. 
I guarantee you, they wouldn't dance and naked around Amazing Grace. Amen. They wouldn't out there, amen, with no clothes on doing all that, amen. I'm telling you what, it was more like Boot Scoot Boogie, amen. There was stuff that they should not have been playing, amen, but they was doing it anyway, amen. But you know what I find? They'll hate you without a cause. You know what I've always said? I've always thought this way. It's my responsibility to preach it if God tells me to preach it, amen. And it's up to you what you do with it. I want to just say this, I'll be judged, amen, by God for what I do here. Amen. The order that I keep, the place that I keep, when I stand for God, if I ever said something that's not right, guess what? I'm going to get an account for it. And you know what? That's a sobering thought to believe and know that everything that I say from that pulpit, I one day am going to stand before God and give an account for it. But I got something else for you. You're going to give an account, amen, for everything you heard, amen. And the things that I say that you don't agree with it, just go on and throw it behind you and say, I ain't going to worry about it. Don't get mad at me, but one day, you just remember, you're going to stand for God with it. And he's going to judge you. And if you was right, you ain't got nothing to worry about. But if you was wrong, amen, we're going to have a lot to worry about. That's just way I, I, it ain't a personal issue. It ain't an issue with trying to make you mad. It ain't an issue with trying to get this thing between us. It's more about you and the word of God. It's about me and the word of God. It's about letting God be true. And his word be true. And when we do that, guess what? You're going to have some people that ain't going to like you very much. The moment you say, oh, we ain't going there, we ain't doing that, I'm telling you, friend, oh, when they try to pass a movie along to you and it's full of uh, sex scenes and it's full of uh, garbage, amen, the talk and all that, and you say, oh, I don't watch it. They ain't going to like it very much. Well, bless God, I watch it and I let my kids watch it. Well, I ain't letting mine. Amen. Preacher, where's all this coming from? I'm just telling you tonight, they'll hate you without a cause. But God gave us a way to love this crowd. You know what he said? Look in Matthew 5, 43. Do you love your enemies? Do you love those that persecute you? Amen. Amen. In verse 43, and 40, he said, Ye have heard that I have said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor. And hate thine enemy. Now that's religion talking there, ain't it? <laughs> love them that love you, but hate them that hate you. Notice what Jesus said. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Now, that gives us a threefold outline of what we're to do and how we're to love our haters. You know what he said there? He said, first of all, we're to bless them. You, what do you mean, preacher? That word bless means to speak well of. It means to speak well to. Have you ever had somebody that persecuted you, that did you wrong, that talked about you behind your back, that treated you like a dog? And you know what you want to do out of this flesh? You want to do the same thing. But you know what God said? He said, speak well of them. He said, Brother Jacob, he said, don't go to that level. Don't get there where you think you've got to persecute them back. Don't think you've got to retaliate. Don't think just because they're mean to you, you've got to be. See, that's not the Christian way to do things, amen. Hey, you know what? That is the old natural way, amen. That's the way of I'll take matters in my own hand and I'll deal with it. You know what, brother? Even in preaching, when people don't agree with me, I don't take it personal. You know what I do? I'll go visit Dairy Queen if I have to, amen, to get over it. That's exactly right. Amen. That's right, amen. You know what? I'll just go eat me a foot-long hot dog full of chili and cheese and forget all about their problems. That's right. You know, that's, uh, is that right tonight? God said, bless them. He said, in other words, don't retaliate. Don't get mad at them. Don't try to get even. Uh, don't get in a, a war of words. Uh, and you ain't careful, amen, you'll get in this war of words with people. And you know what I found out about every situation that I've ever got involved in that? It don't do nothing but escalate. And it don't do nothing but get worse as it goes. 
And then about 30 minutes later, you're both walking away, and you said things you wish you wouldn't have said, oh, but you got so much pride in your heart, you ain't going to dare apologize for it, and you won't ever get it right, and you go through this life, amen, of resenting people, amen, just because they've wronged you. Amen. Well, that ain't no way to be. He said, bless them. Amen. How are you going to do that? Look with me in Romans chapter number 12. In verse number 14. I'm talking about bless them. That's a hard thing to do. Do you never know how hard it is? Some of you do. Brother Leopard probably does. Uh, Brother Keith would probably know. Brother Hope would probably know. Jacob probably even knows. Amen. They preach the gospel. Amen. You know how hard it is to preach to people uh, that despise you and people that don't like you and people that hate you. Amen. And then you go back to the back door and smile and greet them and give them a handshake. If it's in the natural flesh, it's very hard to do. You better be full of God. Amen. If you're going to do that. And it ain't just preaching, amen, you people on these pews. I know I ain't the only one experiencing this kind of thing. Amen, these people that do things wrong to you and you ain't real careful, I'll just be quite honest with you. I'll be quite honest with you, Brother Ty, you know what? If you ain't spiritual, amen, you'll start despising, amen, that wife of yours, amen. You'll start because you feel like wrongdoings, amen, before you know it. Sister Lynn, the same way with Michael, amen. I despise him because of the wrong that he did. But you know what? God said, bless them. You talking about difficult to do in those situations? Now, that ain't talking about being a pacifist. And it's not talking about being a pushover. And it's not talking about just letting people run all over you. Don't misunderstand. But God said, you know what? There is a remedy for these things. Amen. Look what he said, Romans 12 and verse 4. He said, or verse 14, bless them which persecute you bless and curse not you know, why did he just why did he not just say bless them that persecute you because he knows you want to curse them amen he knows you want to curse them he said bless and curse not now i know we all are supposed to be saved in here but we can get the halos off there's people done things to you to cause you to want to curse them and boy, it'll be right on the tip of the tongue. It's in the heart, and you just want to tell it. But the Lord said, bless them, and curse not. I said, boy, the Lord showed me this week, and I was saying, Lord, God help me. I can't tell you the time that thought has rose up. Oh, well, preacher, you're supposed to be a man of God. Hey, I'm telling you, friend, uh, it'll cause you to want to retaliate. And they even curse that crowd. But God said, don't do that. He said, bless them. Now, not only is he telling you not to curse them, he's saying bless them. Man, this just gets deeper as we go, don't it, Brother Ty? God said, bless them. Right. Well, I do good enough not cursing them. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Do good enough not cursing them. Amen. But you know what God said? Don't only not curse them, bless them. Amen. Look what he said in verse 19 of Romans. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. <laughs> now, I know we ain't none of us got no problem with doing that, do we? Avenge, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hungry, hunger, feed him. How many times, look, God will give you opportunities to feed your hungry enemy. And that ain't necessarily with groceries, amen. God will give you an opportunity to feed your enemies. Brother Ty, is what are we going to do when that opportunity arises? Are we going to turn our head like we don't know? Are we going to walk away, amen, amen? And I'm talking about that's more than physical food, amen. Amen. But look what he said. If he thirsts, give him drink. For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Oh, yeah, ain't nothing like, amen, when somebody has took their knife out and they bludge it in you to death and you look at them in their eyeballs and you smile and you love them to Jesus, amen. I'm going to tell you that crowd can't stand that. They can't stand it, brother Jake. They won't. Hey, they pushing those buttons. And when you don't push back, see, they want a response. And they don't want a godly response. They want you 
to step out into their territory. Amen. Where they can point the finger at you and say it's all your fault. Amen. And I will tell you, that's why God said uh, to remain blameless. Amen. Uh, to keep yourself above reproach in these matters. Amen. But look what he said. He said, be not overcome of evil. Mm. Evil will try to overcome you. He said, but overcome evil with good. Amen. Ain't nothing like trying to do good to people that despise you. That ain't what my natural flesh says do. That ain't what I desire to do sometimes. But you know what that inner man, that spirit man says? He says, you know what? You need to be a blessing to them. You need to try to help. You know they're in trouble. You know they're struggling. And it ain't going to get no better for them, amen, if somebody don't reach out to them. Is that right, Brother Ty? Why, hey, listen, we, we sometimes are guilty of despising people for despising us. How much sense does that make? We treat them, we mad because they treated us that way, but we're going to treat them that way. God, but listen now, 1 Corinthians chapter number 4. Is this making sense to you? Verse number 12. He said, and labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Being persecuted, we suffer it. <laughs> we ain't notorious as Baptists for doing that, are we? Boy, when we get persecuted, we're going to try to persecute back. But the Lord says, suffer it. He said, being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. First Peter chapter 3 and verse number 9. Are we blessing those that persecute us? 1 Peter 3 and 9. You ever get to that? Well, I'm going to tell them what I think. <laughs> Have you ever told them what you think? Yes, I'm guilty. I've told them what I thought. And after I did, the Holy Ghost smote my heart. Because you know what, Jacob? Before I told them what I thought, the Holy Ghost said, don't do it. He said, keep your mouth closed. Boy, if we said everything that come to our mind, we'd be in the mess, wouldn't we? Look what he said. He said in verse 9, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise, blessing. <laughs> blessing. He said, knowing that you are there to called, listen, that ye should inherit a blessing. The Lord said, bless them. He said, brother, brother Brad, he said, when they persecute you, you've been called. To bless them. Now that's strong talk right there, brother. He said, yes, they're persecuting you, but I'm calling you as a child of God to bless them. And he said, in doing so, you're going to inherit a blessing. Amen. And sometimes it's going to come in ways you never thought it would come. Amen. Look what he goes on and we're talking about. Look in 1 Peter chapter number uh, 2 and verse 23. Look at our example. It said this, talking about Jesus, who? When he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not. Boy, was he a Baptist. Hmm. He said, he said uh, uh, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. You know what he did? He just left it in God's hands. Oh, now, we see that we're to bless them. And you know, sometimes we get the blessing part down. But he didn't only tell us that we had to bless him. Look back in chapter 5 and verse number 44. He said, bless them that curse you. Look, comma. Did I, what did I tell you that meant? There's more to come. He said, do good to them that hate you. Not only bless them, but now he's telling you, you got to do good. Man, I have a hard enough time doing good to people that do good to me. Brother, amen. And now he's telling me to do good to that crowd that hates you. How are you going to do that? You know what? That's, the, that's what God commanded us to do, is it not? You know what? If we'll do this, it has the potential to transform them. Amen. That's what it's all about. It has the potential, Brother Jacob, of getting in there where they're at on their territory. It has the potential to bring them to our territory. Amen. To the God of heaven. Amen. Look what he goes on to say, Brother Brad. Look in Exodus chapter 23. 
There he goes, amen, again, over there in that Old Testament. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm glad for the Old Testament. He said in verse 4, If thou meet thine enemy's ox or his ass going astray, thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. <laughs> he said, If thou see the ass of him that hateth thee lying under a burden, thou wouldest forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help with him. You know what he's saying there? Brother, I want to tell you, friend, that's some strong stuff. You know what most of us do? Myself included, we act like we ain't seen a thing. Amen. I mean, we saw it, amen, and we know it's there, and we know what's going on, and we know we ought to do the right thing, but we act like we ain't saw nothing. I ain't saw nothing, brother. <laughs> amen. But what did God say? God said, you lend a helping hand. You go over there and you get that ass and take it back to him, Brother Brad. You go get it and recover and take it back to him and bless him. Oh, man, a preacher, you can't be serious. They won't even talk to me. They hate my guts. You ever thought they might not hate you so bad when you show up with that ass that had went astray, amen, and fell under a burden? Amen. They may not hate you so bad then, amen, when you show, hey, it's hard to hate somebody that's blessing you. Right. I mean, they may hate you for a moment of time, but if you keep blessing, it's hard to hate them. Amen. I, fig I figured that out, amen, for myself. It's hard, amen. Look what he said in Luke 6, 27. Amen. I know you about like me, amen. When I was reading these scriptures, amen, I was like, oh, God, help me. I'm going to, look, you're going to kill me today, amen. I better go and repent, amen, and get right with God because I know that ain't always the way I feel. Amen, he said, verse 27, he said, look at verse 20, 26. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. <laughs> Boy, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. But I say unto you which hear, Love your enemies, do good to them that hate you. Bless them that curse you, and pray for them that despitefully use you. Look in Proverbs 25. I'm talking about doing good to them. Just continue to do good. He said, if, I, if thine enemy hunger, give him bread to eat. If he be thirsty, give him water to drink. For thou shalt heap coals of fire upon his head. And, and listen, and the Lord shall reward thee. Amen. See, the Lord's going to reward you for doing the right thing. Look what he said. Let's take this approach, 1 Corinthians 13. <laughs> How are we going to do good, preacher? How are we going to do good in the midst of all this? Look what he said in verse chapter number uh, 13. <clears throat> he said in verse number 3, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor... And though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. He said, charity, listen. Now this is where we come in. Charity suffereth long. Now, we'll claim that part of this scripture, but now there's more to it. And is kind. Some folk, amen, have a problem being kind to people. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. I mean, name the name of Christ and have a hard time just being kind. I'm like, if you can't do nothing, you ought to be able to be kind. Amen. Some folks, amen, can't even tell you they're praying for you kindly. Is that right? I met that crowd. Yeah, too. Amen. But look what he goes on to say. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Uh, does not be, he said, does not behave itself unseemly. Thinketh not her own. It's not easily provoked. Now look, thinketh no evil. Mm. Rejoiceth not in iniquity. You know what? I'm afraid we live in a day where the battery said, praise God, they done fell over there. Hey, in a ditch. I knew they'd get out. Amen. Hey, rejoice in the iniquity of others. Brother, it's a sad state. you in a sad condition when you find yourself rejoicing over people that have fell out of the will of God. Right. Amen. Amen. 
I mean, you see, they, boy, they have been destroyed their life, and we rejoice in that. I knew it was coming. I told you. That ought not make us feel too good. We ought to consider ourselves knowing that it could be us tomorrow. Amen. But look what he said, Brother Brad. He said, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Amen. Now you see, he said, now you're going to have to do, you're going to have to bless them. He said, when you get done blessing, you're going to you're gonna have to do good to them. And lastly of all, I say, what he say in that same verse in chapter number, in Mark chapter, Matthew chapter 5 and verse number 44. He said, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Do we spend as much time talking to God about these people as we talk to others? You know, God said what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to pray for them. Yes, they despitefully use us. Yes, they persecute us. And I ain't telling you you got to be a doormat. Don't misunderstand. You ought not be a doormat for nobody. But what you ought to do, amen, is take consideration of what God said. And we'll do these things. I'm afraid, Sister Lynn, if, we'll, if, if we, my friend, will we'll do good, if we'll bless, and if we'll pray for somebody, I believe that God has the ability to transform them. I believe that God has the ability to bring them from where we at, from where they're at. See, the devil's plan in this whole matter is to get us where they're at. And he wants us to be there for a combat. And he wants us to say all manner of things against one another falsely. And he, have you ever found yourself wanting to falsely, have you ever found yourself telling a story about an enemy that has despitefully used you and you have a, just wanting to inject a little bit more than what the story actually is into it? I have heard people go to tell a story that I knew all about Boy, they would tell it a little bit different than what it actually was. And they would add to it. And they would put another paragraph in there. Some of them even put it right another book and put it in there. But I want to tell you. But they would add it. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to get you out there in the middle of a combat. They're trying to get you out from that place where you can be a help to these people that are hurting you to getting out there where they're at so that you can not only hurt them, but you can hurt others in the process. And you know what? In your Christian life, if you ever cease to want to be a help, and you had rather hurt people than help people, then you need to find an altar somewhere of repentance and get your heart right with God. I have been there. I know what it's like. When you would rather see them fall than you had to succeed. When you had rather inject some hurt in their life than try to be a help. Brother Brad, I want to tell you, friend, I told God when he called me to preach, I said, Lord, I don't ever want to say anything to hurt anybody. Lord, if I can't be a help to folks, I don't want to be a hindrance. Lord, help me to preach truth, nothing but the truth, amen. And you, as long as you help me to do that, then I'll do it, amen. And that ought to be the goal of every child of God in this building tonight is try to help folks, try to be a blessing to people, try to be an encouragement to people. Sister Faith, do you know what he said over there in Galatians chapter 6? I want to close with this thought tonight, amen. In Galatians chapter 6, you know what? Sometimes your enemies are saved, man. And sometimes they ain't where they're supposed to be with God. You know they ain't where they're supposed to be. They know they ain't where they're supposed to be. And this Bible said, brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such one in the spirit of meekness, consider thyself, lest thou also be tempted. You know what? Sometimes, brother, we just got to be the Christian. Sometimes we've got to be the child of God in this matter. You know what I, I want to do, brother Josh? I want to retaliate. Sometimes you feel like, man, I could straighten this out in about two minutes. And every time I've tried to straighten it out in two minutes, it turned to ten minutes. And that ten minutes went a half hour. And that half hour went to an hour. And then before you know it, you done made such a big mess, amen, it was going to be difficult to work out, amen. Why do we not take the little problems like this to God? to begin with and do it in a godly fashion in a godly manner and let God work it out. You know what we do? We try to fix it and we make a big old mess out of it and then we want to get God involved. Amen. When what we ought to do is let God be involved from the beginning. Amen. 
Don't ever approach somebody and try to discuss spiritual matters with them, with them without praying about it. Amen. Can I tell you, timing is everything. And sometimes we try to approach one another and we try to discuss a spiritual matter and we try to handle a situation. You'd better find a place of prayer before you do that, amen. You'd better know, amen, this is the will of God. This is the time. He says, we've got to talk about this thing. We've got to do it, amen. We've got to make sure there ain't no friction here. That they ain't. But you know what? What we do most of the time, amen, is we'll run up in that conversation. I'm right, you're wrong. Has it ever dawned on you that you just could be wrong? It's dawned, brother Ty, you know what it's dawned on me? I could be wrong. Amen. I don't believe I am when I preach, amen. There's been times, amen. But you know what? It is a possibility that I could be wrong. But if I'm wrong, I want to, be, I want to make it right. And if they, I have sat down with pastors, amen, that had done wrong. They knew they had done wrong. And given the benefit of the doubt and given them opportunity to fix it. Amen. Say, so you know what? All you, have, you can fix this right now. All you got to do is tell me you won't ever do it again. Well, I can't tell you that. I'm like, what is that? Listen. I don't ever want to get to the place when if you say something and you hurt somebody, I ain't talking about preaching. I'm talking about if it's biblical, you just got to get it right. But you know what? In preaching, what? On average, probably two and a half hours a week, three services, probably two and a half hours. Some of you probably think it's five hours, but it's only two and a half. Amen. I'm just telling you, you know what I find out? But in the midst of that conversation, this preacher might sometimes say something that it offends you. And it ain't necessarily biblical. And it ain't something I can take you back to and say, bless God, it's what God says. Amen. You probably couldn't either if you spoke to somebody for two and a half hours a week. But if I ever offend you in those regards, and you give me opportunity to fix it, if it ain't nothing biblical, amen, I'm not compromising truth to do it. But if it's ever anything out of me, amen, and you give me opportunity to fix it, I ought to be willing to fix it. Amen. I ought to be willing to say, you know what, I'm sorry about that, brother. I didn't mean, I didn't mean to offend you that way, you know. And you forgive me and we'll just move on. But the same regard goes. I about come to the place, say, man, with people in this church. Now, I'm talking about to this congregation. I don't like the way you, bless. I know. It about puts you in a spot where you want to start saying, well, you know what, brother, I don't like the way you do this. And I don't like the way you do that. And I don't like the way you don't come to church. And I don't like the way you don't participate. And I don't like the way you don't do this. I wonder how that would be received. Yeah. But you know what? The man of God ain't supposed to do that. He's supposed to sit back and listen to what everybody else says about how they don't like him, about the way they don't like the way he does this and the way he don't do that. And if you're going to ever say it, you say it in preaching, and then I'm going to get mad about it again. Amen. And because instead of coming to me, you told everybody else about it. Amen. Listen now, amen, that's right. I'm talking about blessing them. Love them that hate you. Just love them. Amen. That's hard to do, but love them anyway. You know what I found out? Sometimes you'll make a big friend, amen. You will make a huge friend out of loving them anyway. Has anybody ever loved you through something? Before you answer that, let me go on and tell you, Jesus loves you through everything. He loves you through your bad behavior. He loves you through your bad tongue. He loves you through the life you've lived since you've got saved. Yes. He loves you when you sinned against him, amen. He loves you when you've done wrong. He's loved you when you ain't always done right, amen. He's loved you through a bunch of things you didn't deserve being loved through. Amen. And me too. I say thank God. So don't you think we ought to love others through some of these things? Amen. amen. Just love them. Love them that hate you. You have people that just hate you. They despise you. They don't want nothing to do with you. They hate you without a cause, amen. But you know what? In their mind, they got every reason to. But it's hard when you keep on showing up and you keep on knocking on their door and you keep on smiling and you keep on loving them through it anyways and you just, you're just there for them, Brother Brad, and you always just letting them know. And then you're doing good for them and you're praying for them 
Eventually, the whole point of it is, is so that crowd will find a place of reconciliation with them and God. And then after it's with them and God, I promise you, it'll be with them and you. Amen. You see, their problem's not with you. Their problem's with God. Amen. If we ever get a hold of that, it's not personal. It's not personal. They don't hate you because of you. They hate you because you love God. They hate you because of the God of this Bible, Brother Ty. They'll divide with you because of the God of this Bible. And if it ever dawns on you that, it's not you they hate, it's God they hate. If you can just get them to God, amen. If you can just love them to God, amen. If you can just let them see that God really does make a difference in people's lives. I mean, you ain't acting like they're acting. When you act like they act, amen, they can't see Christ living in you, amen. But when you're not acting the way they are, and you love them anyway, guess what? When they reconcile, they're going to get to that place and say, Lord, I don't know how he or she just keeps loving me. God, surely you've made a difference in their life. And they'll find that place to reconcile with God. And then after they reconcile with God, you know what they're going to do? They're going to do a lot like, the, uh, who was it that kept climbing up the tree, down the tree all the time? Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus up and down the tree. You know what? When he got, when he got done, you know what? When, when, when the Lord showed up and said, this day of salvation, visit our house. You know what he said? If I've wronged any man, Amen. Restore fourfold. And you know what he went about doing? He went about making restitution. And I want to tell you, when you can get people back to God, they'll make restitution for what they've done. Amen. They will be an apology. Amen. For what they've done to you. Amen. I can't tell you yet the untold stories that I have heard. Amen. About individuals that have situations going on with others. That individual gets saved. That individual get right with God. And it fixed that relationship, and it mended, it, brother, and they are some of the best, the best of friends to this day. Amen. Amen. That's exactly right. We'll just uh, uh, go on tonight, and our hearts, minds clear. It's been good to be in the Lord's house. You think about it. Amen. How do we love those that hate us?